Replacing the saddle and nut on an acoustic guitar and why we use bone to do this. Firstly, we'll have a look at why we use bone. In the very early days of making musical instruments, there was only a choice of a few materials you could make these parts with. For example, very hard wood, ivory or bone. So the choice was historical basically. However, there is a noticeable difference in tone between a bone saddle and nut and a plastic saddle and nut. To try and demonstrate the difference between the plastic and the bone, I've got two bone saddles and two plastic saddles. The plastic ones are slightly longer because they're from a nylon strung guitar. And I'll just tap them together a few times so you can hear the difference in sound they produce. You should be able to hear that the plastic saddles sound a lot different to the bone saddles when they're tapped together. The plastic saddles have a deeper tone and are far less resonant, whereas the bone saddles have a far better, more resonant sound and they carry higher frequencies more easily. And what this means is that the bone saddle, once installed on a guitar, transfers the sound energy from the strings to the body of the guitar far more efficiently than the plastic ones. The bone used to make bone saddles and nuts is usually described as bovine and that's because more commonly it's either made out of buffalo or cow. There are other choices of material if you don't like the idea of using bone. The one I use quite often is brass and brass has all the benefits of bone in that it uh, transfers the sound really efficiently but it's also, for a metal, quite soft and easy to work with. Uh, so you can file it and cut it and shape it quite easily. And when buying the brass, you can buy it in the correct height and width as a blank nut or saddle. So most of the hard work is already done for you. Another material I've used in the past that can give your guitar a nice warm tone is ebony. However, I found this really hard to work, but the only ebony I've ever used has been from the scrap parts of pianos where I've used the black keys. In conclusion of this part of the video then, my material of choice for electric guitars is usually brass, however for this acoustic guitar I'm going to use bone, as the same principles apply to most other materials. Right, how to fit a bone saddle. The first thing I need to do is remove all the strings and to help me with this I'll be using a string winder which is a really cheap tool you can get at any music shop or your favourite stall on the internet. On some string winder tools you also get a peg removal tool for taking the pegs out of the other end of the guitar however quite often I find these don't work too well. And all we have to do with a string winder is put it over the machine head thumb grip and then use it to unwind the strings more quickly than we would do if we did it by hand. Obviously you can do it just as well by hand, it just takes a little bit longer. For this video I'm removing all the strings at the headstock end of the guitar and then I'll be moving on to the other end of the guitar and releasing the strings from the pegs. However, I'm only doing it this way to save me moving the camera back and forward and back and forward. If I was doing it without filming it, I'd probably remove the strings one at a time so I could fold them up again and keep them safe. Because for this particular job, I want to put the same strings back on again. And that's because I might need to put the strings back on again and then take them off again. And obviously I don't want to waste a new set of strings. So my best plan of action is to do the job and then when I'm happy with it, remove those strings and replace them with a new set of strings. When you remove a string or a set of strings and put it back on again, you're work hardening them. So you can only do this a couple of times before the strings start to break. 
So when you finish doing the job and you're happy with it, it's always a good idea to put a new set of strings on. Or I don't even start a job on my own guitars until I know I need to replace the strings and that way I'm not wasting good strings. It's quite a common occurrence that a string doesn't want to be removed and if this happens what I try to do is create a loop and then pull from there and it gets it out. However if I can't do that sometimes in the worst case scenario you have to cut the string off in little pieces. Once you've removed the strings from the machine heads you can move down to the bridge end of the guitar to remove the pegs. The pegs fit very tightly but there's several ways of removing them. One way is using the tool at the end of the string winder. However, I don't have much success with these, but you might have better luck. Here is a special tool that is just designed for removing the pegs, and these are pretty good, and they're only very cheap to buy. However, my favourite method is actually to use wire cutters and I just use the wire cutters to grip onto the end of the peg and then I can pull it out. Obviously, you're not cutting into the pegs, you just hold it tight enough to keep hold of it. Once you've removed the pegs, you can easily remove all the strings and now you can easily get to the saddle. The saddle isn't glued into place, so in some cases it can just be pulled out with the fingertips. However, on this guitar, I need to use a pair of pliers. Once you've removed the saddle, we can now use it as a template to get the new saddle to exactly the same height. Or, if you need to make any adjustments to the action, you can do those at this stage as well. To get the new saddle to the same height as the old saddle, we need to sand it from the bottom on a completely flat surface. For a flat surface, you can use anything really that you know is flat. However, I'll be using an aluminium block and I need to stick a new piece of sandpaper to it using some two-sided tape. So I'll just do that first. If you're going to use a full sheet of sandpaper or wet and dry on a large flat surface, then you don't really need to stick it down because you've got room to hold it down with your hands. However, because I'm using a strip of emery paper, I need to stick it to the aluminium block so it won't move around whilst I'm trying to sand the saddle down. Once you've prepared to start sanding, you can start sanding the base of the new saddle. And what you have to do is sand for a bit and then compare the new saddle with the old saddle to check you're taking enough or you're not taking too much off the new saddle. And keep doing this until you get fairly close to the size you're looking for. If you wanted to change your action slightly, I'd do it now. So if you want the action to be slightly higher, you don't sand the saddle down quite so far, so it'll be a little bit bigger than the old saddle. However, if you want a lower action, you need to sand it down a little more, so the new saddle will be slightly smaller or lower than the old saddle. However, do this very carefully, because if you take too much off, you'll ruin the new saddle, and you'll have to start again with another new saddle. We'll actually look at how to set up your action in a separate video. Once the new saddle is fairly close to the size you want, you need to check it more often with the old saddle. And something you need to pay particular attention to is the bottom of the new saddle. It should be as flat and as straight as possible. If the base of the new saddle is crooked or uneven, it won't get a good contact with the piezo pickup. 
and this means you might have strings that are too loud or too quiet or you'll just get a general bad tone out of the pickup. Even if you haven't got a piezo pickup, the base of the saddle should still be as even and as flat as possible so that the sound can be conducted cleanly through to the body of the guitar. This can take ages and your fingers can get quite sore from holding the saddle, but be patient because if you do it properly it can really improve the sound of the guitar, the playability of the guitar and it will last as long as the guitar lasts, so it's worth doing properly. And once you've finished preparing your saddle and it's ready to go back on the guitar, it literally is a case of just push it back into the slot. Once you've got really close to the size and shape you want it, you want to double check it and triple check it and make sure it's exactly right on each string. And then when you're completely happy with it, you can put it back in the slot and we can move on to the nut. Right, how to fit a bone nut. The first thing we need to do is remove the old nut and hopefully this won't be too difficult. The easiest way is to get hold of the back of the neck of the guitar and place both thumbs on the nut and push gently backwards and hope it breaks away. And on this guitar that's exactly what it did. That was really nice and easy and most of the time it is. However it's worth me pointing out that I have come across the odd occasions where I've had to chisel the old nut out and then file down the final finish before I could put a new nut in. This doesn't happen very often, but it's really annoying when it does. First thing we need to do is check that the new nut is more or less the same as the old nut. It doesn't matter if it's a little big, but it will matter if it's too small. And you can see these sat alongside each other are pretty much identical. Something I noticed here that I think is well worth pointing out is the difference in quality between the old nut and the new nut. And you can see the old nut has actually got hollows in it, whereas the new nut is solid. And when I go back and look at the old saddle, you can see this had the same thing, which is particularly bad if you're using a piezo pickup. In my mind, just this reason alone would be enough to change the saddle and nut. Okay, because this nut is so similar to the old one, what I'm going to do is test it in place first before I go any further. So we'll put the bottom E string on and the top E string on and use them to hold the nut in place. You'll also notice I've changed the pegs and this was because the nut and the saddle came in a kit with the pegs so I literally just swapped these out and I'm sure you'll agree, they look a lot nicer than the old ones. It's important to make sure that the nut is in place before you try putting any pressure on the strings. Because if you put pressure on the strings whilst the strings resting against the fingerboard, the chances are it will damage it. So, put the nut in place and put the string on top of it and then tighten the string up a little. Once you've fitted the top E string and the bottom E string so they're holding the saddle and the nut into place, you want to tune them up. Then you want to place a finger on the third fret 
of either the top E string or the bottom E string and push the string down with another finger towards the first fret to actually touch the fret itself. There should be just the tiniest amount of movement between the string and the first fret. Less than a millimetre or a millimetre at the very most. If there's any more than this then the action's too high. However if it's lower than this or if the string touches the first fret then the action's too low and that string will probably buzz. In this particular case it's actually too close to call so what I'm actually going to do is put on the rest of the strings and then test it again. Now I'll put the other strings back on then. Whilst I'm putting the strings on I'll just explain why we put our finger on the third fret. And this is to take the bridge and saddle end of the guitar out of the equation. By placing your finger on the third fret you can measure and adjust the action at the nut end of the guitar without it being affected by the action at the saddle and bridge end of the guitar. So even if the action seriously needs setting at the saddle and the bridge you don't have to worry about it when you're setting the action at the nut as long as you place your finger on the third fret. If you're concerned about setting your action and you want to wait until you're sure what you're doing it might be worth you waiting until I upload the video I will be doing soon just on action where we'll look at it in far more detail. However if you've replaced your nut you'll need to check that it's at least about right. You need to keep your eye on the sharp ends of the strings because you can poke yourself quite nastily with them and they can even scratch the guitar so try to keep them away from the varnish if you can. Before I test the action with all the strings on I need to tune the guitar up and this is so the strings are at the correct tension and that way I'll get a more accurate idea of how high the action is. Now I've put all the strings on, I'm going to put my finger back on the third fret and then push down the string to touch the first fret so I can see what the gap's like between each of the strings and the fret. So now I've tested each string, it's become quite clear that this nut is just a little bit too high so I need to take some off the bottom in exactly the same way I took down the saddle. This time, to speed up the process, and because I'm only adjusting the nut and I know it's not glued in place, I'll only loosen the strings off so that hopefully I can slide the nut out from underneath. Then I can adjust the nut and slide it back in. Okay, out comes the sanding block and we'll lower the nut slightly. You'll notice that I'll be using the old nut as a reference height. This is because it was a really good height so I want to match that as close as I can. It's important that you have some point of reference however. If you don't have a point of reference and you start sanding then you've no way of knowing how much you've taken off the nut and therefore it's quite easy to take too much off and that would ruin the nut and you'd have to either put the old one back on or get a new one. If you're not going to use the old nut as a reference height then you'll need to mark the new nut with the amount of material you want to take off it so you know when to stop sanding. Just like we did when we shaped the saddle it's important when you get close to the size you want to look very closely at your measurements and keep comparing. It's worth also sliding the nuts along back to back so that you're comparing like to like because each string is a different height therefore you need to compare the two bottom E strings the two A strings the two D strings etc etc and go through each string one by one to check that each string matches up with the new one and if you really want an accurate job it would be worth using a magnifying glass to make sure you're getting it exactly right 
because literally half a millimetre can make a difference when you're talking about the nuts. By doing it this way, you'll be pretty much guaranteed to do a good job and get a well-fitting nut. Right, I've put this nut back on again and tuned up the strings so I can check the action at the first fret and see if it is acceptable now. Even before I started testing the action at the nut, I could tell pretty much straight away that it was a good height. And sure enough, my tests are confirming that. I'm very pleased with this. The uh, action is a perfect height and doesn't need any more adjustments on this end of the guitar. However, it does show up the saddle as being a little bit high still. But I'll leave this for a future video. Uh, and when you strum the guitar, the open strings, there's no open buzzes, which again is very important. So all that's left to do is for you to hear the guitar and how it sounds. And I can tell you straight away here, it sounds a lot better than it did with the plastic saddle and nut. Here's the original sound check I did just after fitting the piezo pickup. <laughs> And here's how the guitar sounds now. I really hope you find this video useful and if you did enjoy it and would like to see more please like and subscribe and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching.